Okay, uh, good morning everyone. We'll start in one minute or so. Um, the last lesson today on surface areas of cuboids and prisms. And this is the last one before we break for the summer. So this will be the last free online GCC maths lesson and we'll start in about one minute. Okay, thanks. Okay, folks, just waiting for it to hit 11 o'clock and then we'll make a start. Should be any second now. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so welcome to the last free online GCSE maths lesson. And today we're going to cover surface areas of cuboids and prisms. And we're going to sort of build on what we did in the last couple of lessons, which is the idea about organising a sporting event or uh, a concert, that type of idea. So we're trying to link it to the real world. And that's what we're all about in these sessions. We're not just trying to do lots and lots of examples and lots and lots of exam questions. We're trying to link it to more problem solving based questions, which is generally what students find hard to access, particularly on the new specification GCSE. So my name is Mr. Smart and I'm hosting today's session as I have done all the others. And I'm just trying to make it a bit more fun and a bit more relevant, but still giving you and providing you with the skills and maths knowledge you need for your exams and beyond. Today, you'll need a pen, pencil, paper, calculator. You'll need all of those things. Um, and we're going to focus on surface area today. And surface area is trickier than volume in many ways. Um, but let's look at why that is. Okay, how it works. Okay, uh, anything in blue is something for you to have a go at. So in this case, for instance, I've said here, work out the area of the following compound shape. You can have a go at that one actually, whilst I'm talking through the rest of it. Okay, there's a compound shape there. There's a rectangle and a trapezium put together to make a, a one big shape. And then Anything in purple or with a purple background represents a slightly harder task. Or it, Sometimes I'll ask you to think in a slightly different way when I put something in purple. And then anything with a yellow box and with answer written on it means it's covering a solution. Okay, So you can see here, I have an answer box down here that's covering a solution. And it's the solution to the area of the compound shape. Just to say here, the area of the compound shape, 4 meters times 10 meters, that's going to be 40 meters squared and in here we've got a trapezium so it's going to be a half of the parallel size the parallel sides here and here so that's 10 meters a half of 10 meters at 8 meters and then times the perpendicular height okay so 10 at 8 is 18 half of 18 is uh, 9 and then I'll just do there and then times by the perpendicular height. So what have I got there? 9 times 4, which is 36. So the area of that one would be 36 meters squared. Add them together and you get your answer. Okay, and you get 76 uh, meters squared in total. Okay, so that's how it works. Now we're going to move through. And I'm going to ask you here to have a look at this one yourself. Now, just to remind you, okay, of what a net is, I've put a reminder here, actually, in this box, just so that if you need to refer back to it, you can. A net is a two-dimensional figure that can be folded into a three-dimensional object representation of a 3D shape. So what we're saying is, if you imagine unfolding this cuboid, what would it look like? And then I'm asking you to calculate the surface area. Once you've drawn the net, you don't have to draw it exactly. Don't use a, you know, sketch it. Sketch the net of the cuboid below and then work out the surface area. How would you do that? Okay, and why might that help you calculate the surface area? Have a think about it. Okay, I'll just give you a minute or two. And then I'm going to go through this one top to bottom and explain why I think it will help you to calculate the surface area. It will help you if you think about the net.
And just to say here, I normally start with the bottom of the shape, okay, or the base of the shape, you might call it the base, you know, and I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to go to the next slide now and start talking you through this one. So I tend to start here and then work outwards. So that's the bottom of the shape, okay, and then I work from there. So then I, I look here and I think, okay, the sides, I've got a side here and a side here, they're going to be the same. This length here is two, so that relates to that length there. This length here is three, so this length here is three. And you can see, I'm, I'm doing this, and I'm writing down every single length everywhere. Some of you think, well, do you need to do that? Well, no, you don't need to do that, but I'm doing it here just to give you an idea of what's going on. And then I'm thinking, okay, let's look at the front. And let's look at the front of this shape. So I'm thinking, okay, the front of the shape, we've got... The length there is 4 and the width there is 2, so that's where that 4 has come from and that's where that 2 has come from. And then we know the front and the back are going to be the same, so I've put 4 here and 2 here and I've put 4 here and 2 here. We know they're going to be the same, so I've slow, systematically just unfolded the shape. And then, of course, the one we mustn't forget is the top. But what do we know about the top of the cuboid? We know the top must be the same as the, the bottom. And you can see here, I've got the same measurements. I've got three meters here. Let's do this in black, actually. Three meters here and three meters here. I've got three meters here and three meters here. I've got four meters here and four meters here. And so likewise there. So you can see that I've deconstructed it nicely. I've drawn the net quite accurately. And now what have I got to do to work out the surface area? Well, really, just a, a series of really simple calculations. They're all rectangles. So top one, four meters multiplied by three meters is 12 meters squared. That one's there. That's going to be the same for the bottom as it is for the top. So we've got two of those. Then I'm going to do the back. So the back is four meters multiplied by two meters, which is eight meters squared. That's going to be the same as the front. Okay, then I've got the two sides. So I've got two meters multiplied by three meters, which is six meters squared. And that's going to be the same as the other side. And I'm not done yet. I've done quite a lot of work. None of it's particularly difficult, but I need to add those all together to give me the surface area, which is what I've done now. So what have I done now? I've done 12 meters squared, add 8 meters squared, add 6 meters squared, add 12 meters squared, add 6 meters squared, add 8 meters squared, added them all together, and that's given me uh, 52 meters squared in total. So the total surface area of that cuboid was 52 meters squared, and there's quite a lot to do to get all of those uh, marks on that type of question. So here's two for you to have a go at now. Okay, I'm not insisting that you draw the nets here, but I think it might help you. The one on the left hand side is a cube, just to make that really clear. So that one should be slightly easier. And the one on the right hand side is a cuboid. And I'm asking you to calculate the surface area of both of these, just to make sure you know how to do it before we move on to some trickier questions. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. Okay, I'm just going to do the one on the left hand side, which is the cube, and I'm just going to show you how I calculate it. What we know about a cube is that all the faces are equal. So, you know, think about a regular dice. Uh, all of the, the faces have the same area, and that's the same here. So if we work out the area of one of the faces and then times it by six, we're going to get the surface area of the cube. Now, what a lot of students do here, they'll just work out the volume. They'll do five times five times five in this case, and they get 125 and think, ah, job done but it's not that's not the answer it's going to be five meters multiplied by five meters and why have I done that that gives me the area of one of the 
faces, and then there's six faces that are exactly the same as that one, so I'm going to times that answer by six. So what we get is we get 5 metres multiplied by 5 metres, which would be 25 metres squared. Then we times it by 6 because there are 6 faces that are exactly the same. And we get 150 metres squared. The cuboid on the right hand side is slightly trickier. Not, not hugely, okay, but we do need to calculate a few things. Now what I would tend to do here, and I'll just say this again, is... I would actually write a lot of these measurements on. So if this one's four meters, the one above must be four meters. If this one's four meters, this length here must be four meters. If this one's six meters, this one must be six meters, and so on. I'd actually write some of the measurements, the other measurements on, just so that I can see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. You don't have to do it, but that's just I'm just saying that's how I sort of do these questions. So what do we know here? Well, if I look at the bottom of the shape, okay. Okay, we've got four times six. Just do this in, I'll do this in red. Oh, hang on, it's not, the red's not activated there. Let's just do that. So that's the bottom of the shape, and that's where I tend to start when they're slightly trickier. And that's given by doing four multiplied by six. Okay, and what we also know is that the top will be the same. Okay, so we know that the top of the shape will be the same. That will also be uh, 4 times 6. Okay. And then we also know, we'll do this in a different colour, I'll do it in purple. We know that the front of the shape here is also given by 4 times 6. Okay. That's given by 4 times 6. And the front of the shape is going to be the same as the back of the shape. Now you could have drawn the net out here, and that might have helped you. But what we know is there's four sides of this cuboid. The area is given by four meters times six meters. So because there's four faces that are going to have that area, that's why I've times it by four there. Okay? And then if you look at the other bit that we haven't done so far, and again I'll do this in a different colour, we've got four meters times four meters. That gives me the area of this side. And we know that the area of the opposite side must be the same. So that's why I've times that one by two. And then we are literally just using our calculator to work it through. So we've got 4 metres multiplied by 6 metres multiplied by 4. That gives me 96 metres squared. Notice how we're working in the second dimension because we're dealing with a surface area. We're not dealing with a volume. It's amazing how often the units get confused with students that are working on these questions. They get mixed up. Then we've got 4 metres multiplied by 4 metres, which is 16 metres squared, times by 2. gives me 32 metres squared. So the final answer is 128 metres squared. And although that now looks like a bit of a mess up there, you can see hopefully how systematically I go through it so I don't miss anything out. And that's basically what I'm trying to do to avoid errors. Okay, just to show you quickly, just to go through nets there, okay, we, uh, if I just click on that, you can just hopefully see what I'm about to show you. If I fade out that cube, you can see that it could literally exactly fit so that cube turns into that net okay that's the first one I wanted to show you and then this is a triangular prism and you can see I've unfolded it here and the tricky one with the triangular prism which we are going to get to today is always the area of this face here and some of you might straight away be thinking about this and be thinking how do I know what that length there is have a think about where's that length on the triangle if I folded this the red dot, sorry, if I folded that back into a triangular prism, what would the length of this side be? Okay, and we'll get to that as we go on. And then here, I was hoping to show you, if I can quickly get that to activate, again here, you'll see, that you can see that that triangular prism can turn into that net there. I've had to do it at a slight angle just to make, make it visual for you, but you can see that it works there. So, Think about how, when you unfold something like a triangular prism, what would it look like as a 2D net? It's quite a useful way to, to, to make sure you don't make mistakes on these questions. Okay, so in the last lesson, we looked at volumes and loading full-size blocks into trucks and to get to the venue. And you can see here, you know, I'm just going over the same picture again, but you can see here there's cranes and all sorts of equipment that bring in stuff in. And then it's basically the stage is assembled or the boxing ring or the tennis court or whatever it is they're doing the event. This is actually the O2 again. 
So they have lots of different events at the O2, and as I'm sure you're aware, you know, they have like pop concerts, they have boxing matches, they have gymnastics. I think they have all sorts of different events. So depending on what the event is, depending on what you'll be constructing. But we're, I think it's safe to say we're constructing stages here. And if we think about what happened in the last session, what we was doing is we was loading the blocks and they'd been assembled already. So you was loading it as a volume here. So stage block A, you know, I was thinking, okay, here's the truck. Can we fit it in? Yeah, okay. That one fits in okay. Yeah, let's get that one in. Then stage block B here, loading this one in. Is that one loading as well? Yeah. And then stage block C. But these were already assembled as, you know, they're large because they've been assembled. It means less work when you get to the venue, but it means more work. Okay, and you can see there, there's the haulage container, and you can see that those volumes fitted exactly into that haulage container. But what about if we'd flat packed them? Okay, and what I mean by that is, what about if we'd basically transported these stage blocks as 2D shapes rather than 3D shapes? How much would that save on transportation costs? Now, they're still going to be 3D shapes, really, but what I mean is, rather than them being assembled and constructed already, if they were flat packed, how much space could we save on the volume? Well, we could save a lot of space, and that's what we're going to work through now. All right, so here's where you have to do some work, folks, and it's going to take a while to do this, and there's no way around. I have to just let you have a go at this. So a stage is going to be constructed from the following 3D shapes, but we're not going to take them. We're not going to take them to the venues as 3D shapes. We're going to flat pack them and take them uh, that way. So I need to calculate two things here. I need to know the surface area of each of the following stage blocks. So I want you to work out the surface area of stage block S, stage block U, stage block T, stage block V. Be careful with stage block V because it's a triangular prism and as I said to you, you need to know this length here. And to, to work out this length here, you may need to use Pythagoras theorem okay that's a hint for you so that is a trickier question and then in purple remember what purple means something slightly trickier if each face has a width of 10 centimeters what will be the volume of each stage block okay so that's something for you to think about okay if you finish the surface areas and I'm going to give you I have to give you like five minutes on this okay so I will start going through some of the answers in a couple of minutes, but I'll give you five minutes in total to work through this because it will take a while. Good luck. So just remember folks, we're going to do the surface areas first. So I'm going to just reveal stage block S surface area answer. 
and I'll go I'll put that let me put that in the bin actually let me put that right out of the way let me put that one in the bin okay so what have we got here we've got stage uh, block s and we've got four meters multiplied by four meters I'm gonna actually do you know what I'm gonna yeah that's fine four meters by four meters that's the front and the back of the shape and I haven't drawn the net here, I'm just saying the front and back is 4 meters multiplied by 4 meters, so there's two faces of the shape. That's why I've times it by 2. And then the, all the others are going to be just writing 2s everywhere that I need to and 4s everywhere I need to. Okay, if we deal with the sides now, let's do it in a different color. You get 2 meters multiplied by 4 meters, that's going to be the same for both sides. And also, the top and the bottom are also given by 2 metres multiplied by 4 metres. So there's four faces that are calculated by doing 4 metres multiplied by 2 metres. That's why I've times by 4 there. Okay, and then it's a calculation issue. So 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32 metres squared. And then 4 times 2 is... Uh, 4 metres times 2 metres is 8 metres squared. 8 metres squared times 4 is also... 32 meters squared. Add those together, you get 64 meters squared. So that's stage block S, surface area calculated. Let's have a look at stage block U. And again here, because you've got uh, a square on the uh, side here, four of the faces are going to be calculated by doing three times eight, and the front and well, the two sides are going to be given by three meters multiplied by three meters. So I've got 3 metres multiplied by 3 metres times by 2 because two of the faces of the shape have that area. And then I'm going to have 3 metres multiplied by 8 metres times by 4 because four of the faces are going to have the area given by... What's that word? Okay. And if you work that out, that gives you 114 metres squared. Excuse me. Okay, so that's stage block U. Let's put that one away. And then stage block T and stage block V. I'll give you another minute to try and finish those off. And if anyone's managed to get this bit done, that'll be very impressive. Because it's not easy, that one. It's not easy, this bit. Okay. Okay, let's look at stage block T, and this one's, you know, a cube, so, because all of the uh, sides are the same, so it's going to be 4 times 4 times 6, and that then gives us 96 metres squared, so that was quite an easy one. Stage block V is a triangular, and this one is trickier, okay, and I will go through this one. So first of all, I've dealt with the triangular parts, and I'll do this in red. So I've done half the base times the perpendicular height. So the base is 4 metres, so half of that is 2. The perpendicular height here is 3 metres. So I've used the formula there, half base times height. And I've times it by 2. Why have I times it by 2? Because we know that the opposite side is also going to have that same surface area, folks. That's why I've times it by 2. All right, so that's those two sides. Let's do the next bit in blue try and be really careful here so you can see what I've done. 
So now the base of the shape, four meters multiplied by six meters, that's this bit, uh, sorry folks, that's this bit here. Okay, that's this face here. And there's only one of those, so it's just four meters times by six meters. Then we've got the back of the shape. And again, is the pen on? Yeah, it's definitely on. There's only one of those, and that's going to be three meters times six meters. You know, you could write the measurements on if you wanted to. Like I said earlier, you can write, I tend to write all the measurements on everywhere just because it makes my life easier. But this tricky one, okay, is this diagonal face, okay? It's this diagonal face here. And in order to work this one out, okay, you're going to need to know what this length here is. In fact, let's clear some of the rest of it off. Hopefully, everything to now is all clear. I just want to make sure this is really clear now. Okay, I'll do this one in red. Is we have to work out that this diagonal side is five meters, and then to work out the area of this diagonal face, we'd have to do five meters multiplied by six meters. And some of you might be thinking, well, how's he got that five meters? Where's that come from? Well, I've used Pythagoras' theorem. Okay. And what I'm saying there is 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. And my pen stopped working particularly, not working particularly well now. So I've used Pythagoras theorem to get that 5 meters. Now I can't go into Pythagoras theorem in too much depth here because I just don't have the time. Okay, but that 5 meters multiplied by 6 meters, that 5, which is that length there has come from using Pythagoras' theorem. Okay, so that was a significantly more difficult question and then the surface area comes out to be 84 meters squared. Alright, so hopefully a lot of you got that and if you did, well done, because that's not the easiest. Quite often they'll give you the, the length of the hypotenuse when they, when they do these types of questions, but on a really tricky one they might not, so it's not a bad one to get used to. In purple, okay, um, I asked you, if each face has a width of 10 centimetres, what will be the volume of each stage block? Just to um, quickly reiterate here, what I've done is, I've written what the surface areas were from the previous. I've just reminded, of you, reminded you of the surface areas, so you can see what they are. And I'm just going to go through the calculations on the first two, and show you how you, how you may have done it. Okay, so volume when flat, so... What we might have done, if you think about this logically, if, if the wood was 10 centimetres thick that's being used to make these stage blocks, we'd do 4 metres times 4 metres times 0 0.1 metres. Okay, why 0 0.1 metres? Because this is important. What's this measurement here in? It's in centimetres. I need to work in the same unit, even though they're in the same system. They're, they're all metric measurements. I still need to use all meters or all centimeters, whichever way around you want to go, but you need to make sure you've converted correctly. I've converted 10 centimeters into 0.1 meters. Remember this task is in purple, so it is meant to be trickier. Okay, and then I've times that by two because there's two faces that had that area. Then I've done the same thing for the other faces and there's four of those and I've times that by 0.1 as well. And that's given me a volume then of 6.4 meters cubed. And what's interesting here, and what some of you may have spotted, is that 64 meters squared was the surface area and the volume, when we actually worked out the actual volume of all the wood when it was flat packed, was 6.4 meters cubed. Now that's a lot less than it was, than it would be if it was left set up as it is. Okay, and then stage block U, volume when flat, Okay, you can see I've timed it by 0.1 meters again. This one comes out to be 11.4 meters cubed. And what was the surface area? I reminded you of it up here. It was 114 meters squared. Is there a connection? Something happening here? Okay, I'll leave you to have a think about that and have a go at the next two. I'll give you one minute. You don't need to, to actually unpick it and redo the net or redo the surface area calculations. You should be able to see a connection now between them. Okay, some of you will be thinking, okay, that one's going to be 9.6 meters cubed. Let's have a look for stage block T. Let's have a look and see what it is. 
9.6 meters cubed and some of you will be saying it'd be 8.4 meters cubed for, for stage block V if it was flat packed and indeed it is. So you can see there we've used the surface area and then we've linked it back to volume again and in real life you'd be doing this, you'd be thinking about and you might only need like if you think, I don't know if those how many of you watched the last lesson on this but I think we needed four trucks or five trucks to get everything there to the stage to the O2 you might only need one truck if you flat packed it and if you only need one truck that's a lot less money okay but then you might have to pay a bit more money at the other end to get people to construct it I don't know but you get the idea you'll make these decisions if you're if you're running large scales in scale events all right okay what I'd like you to do now and again here just to say I have put the surface areas reminded you of the surface areas by putting them next to the shapes can you work out the total surface area of the stage set below and then work out the performance area of the stage which is the green faces only and what I mean by that is where the performers can actually perform so they can only perform on the tops the top face of all of these shapes so we've got a block S at the end here then two block T's in the middle then a block S at the end then we've got a block U okay so the performers can jump down from block T down to block U and then they've got a ramp for block V but anything that I've shown in red they could potentially dance on or sing on or perform on in one way or another so I'm asking you for two things I want the total surface area of the stage set below okay which is quite straightforward because you've already done the hard work on that you've done the calculations in a previous slide then I want you to work out the performance area of the stage which is the green faces which I've just shaded in red okay good luck with that one I'll give you two minutes Okay, so the total surface area is quite straightforward. We already know the surface area of one stage block S is equal to 64 meters squared. And we know we've got two block S's here. So I'm going to times that one by two. So that will give me 128 meters squared. Because we have two, and we've got two block T's also. So again, I'll times that one by two. So what would that give me? Uh, 192 meters squared. Um, we've only got one block V. So... I'd add one of those on, then I'd add 114 as well. So I'd be doing 128 meters squared plus 192 meters squared, which gives me 320, and then I'd have uh, 100, add 114 and add 84, and I've done that on the next slide so you get to the final answer, but that's what the calculation would be. For the next part, working out the performance area, I'm only working out the area of the green faces, so I'm just going to quickly have a look at this. I've, again, I've got the answers on the next one. That'll be two meters. That'll be four meters. Two meters multiplied by four meters would be eight meters squared. Come on, pen, catch up with me, and that would be the same there. So times that by two. T. What would the area of T be? Ah, oh, okay. Looking at it here, it's going to be four by four. So that's going to be sixteen meters squared and there's going to be another one of those there so there's be two of those what have we got here we've got 
3 meters and 8 meters. So 3 meters multiplied by 8 meters is going to give me 24 meters squared. And then what have we got here? We've got 5 meters times 6, which is going to be 30 meters squared. Happy days. Right, so we know what we're doing. And all the calculations now, I'm going to get to those on the next slide. Just finish them off. Okay, total surf stage surface area. Okay, let's just reveal this and then go through where all these numbers came from. We had two lots of 64 meters squared because we had two S blocks, which is what we said. Just looking at them a minute ago, two of those. Sometimes the pen is a little slow to react, folks. So there's there's 64, 64. Then we've got 96 and 96. And then we've got 114 and then 84. Okay, added them all together. This is what we was talking about. And you get 518 meters squared is the total surface area of that stage set. So hopefully you all got that and you started to really get into the, the idea of how you would need to calculate a total surface area or a total volume or both when you're making a, a good uh, real life problem. Total performance area, okay, spoke through this. Okay, we had four meters multiplied by two meters and we times that by two because we had two faces there. Four meters multiplied by four meters and we times that by two because we had two of those, that's the T's. And then three meters multiplied by eight meters and then five meters multiplied by six meters. Add all those together and you get 102 meters squared. So the actual area that the performance can perform on is only 102 meters squared. But the total surface area of the whole stage is 518 meters squared, but that makes sense because you wouldn't be performing on the side or the base of the shape or the back of the shape, you'd only be performing on the top of the shapes. So that sort of fits together nicely. All right, now we need to get onto some exam type questions because, as we always do, we link it back to some exam type questions. There's three exam questions here um, a green one, here is a cuboid, so quite straightforward. Um, the purple one is a triangular prism. Just to say here though folks, they have given you the hypotenuse of the triangle. They've also clearly shown you there's a right angle there. So you know that you've got a perpendicular height. Now I probably shouldn't tell you that, maybe let you figure that out. But because we've only got five or six minutes left, I don't want you to get stuck. Because I really would like all of you to have a go at this final one. Now what I suggest you do with this one, is try and think about the net of the shape. Which is something we spoke about at the beginning. And it tells you this is the surface area of a cube. So what would the net of a cube be like? Now I did show you one, I think it was on one, slide four or slide five. That might really help you with this question, if you think about it that way. So the total surface area of a cube is 294 centimeters squared. This is thus, work out the volume of the cube. So you've got to sort of work backwards and then work forwards again. Have a look, see how you get on. If if we say in two minutes I'll do the, the green question, then two minutes after I'll do the first purple question, and then two minutes after that I'll do the, the second purple question. Off you go.
Okay, let's have a look at this first green one. Um, the way I would do it probably is, is, if I'm honest, I think I'd probably do the two sides first because I know they're going to be the same. If I put dotted lines on there, you might be able to see. So I'd do 1.5 centimetres multiplied by 1.5 centimetres and that would give me 2.25 centimetres squared. I'd double it. Why would I double it? Because I know that these two areas are the same so that would give me 4.5 centimeters squared then i would do six centimeters let's do a different color actually i do six centimeters times 1.5 centimeters and that would give me uh nine centimeters squared and then i times that one by four because i know that the front and the back would equal that and also the top and the bottom would equal that so 4 times 9 is 36 so it'd be 36 centimeters squared add 4.5 meters 4.5 centimeters squared so it'll come out to be 40.5 centimeters squared and I've got the uh, solutions printed over here okay you can see that one there already what I wanted to do was to give you a hint here for this one as well so if you haven't got to that into that last question now maybe just having that net there as a hint would help you okay so I'll leave that one there and in and oh, I've almost run out of time already okay I will go through this other purple one as well but I'll put that net on as a, as a sort of hint to help you try and access that question Okay, I'm going to go through the uh, the first purple one now quickly. All right, I'm going to first of all I'm going to do the triangular faces. So I'm going to do half the base. In this case, the base is five centimeters times the perpendicular. I had the one that's perpendicular, where they've very clearly made there's a right angle there, times by twelve centimeters, and I'm going to double that. Why am I going to double it? because there's two faces that have the same area, that's for sure, okay? So that's that bit. How do I work out the back of this shape? Well, the back of this shape is gonna be given by what? It's gonna be 12 times 20, okay? So let's do that in blue. The back of this triangular prism is given by 12 multiplied by 20. And then the base of this shape, let's do that in purple, is given by 5 multiplied by 20 centimetres. And then the trickier one, which is that this diagonal face is given by, oh, what colour can I use? Oh, I'll use brown. I've got 13 there and 20 there. So the final face is given by 13 centimetres multiplied by 20 centimeters and it's amazing how many people just miss that last one off they just sort of don't see it and that's why drawing the net of that shape might really help you in an exam situation because you won't miss anything out you'll know that you should have five faces in your calculation let's count with two three four five yeah so that fits here's the actual answers that's exactly what i've just done now um I've just gone through it you get 60 centimeters squared plus 240 centimeters squared plus 100 centimeters squared plus 260 centimeters squared and that gives you a total of 660 centimeters squared another key thing students often put cube they just think they're working with a volume for some reason even though it clearly says a surface area so just keep that in your mind folks it's such an easy mistake to make i mean i think everyone makes silly mistakes now and then in an exam situation, you just minimise the chance of you making those silly mistakes. Okay, let's quickly go through this one. The total surface area of a cube is 294 centimetres squared. And I've drawn the net here. And what they, what I know about a cube is we know we have six faces. You can see them all here. Two, three, four, five, six. And they all have equal area. So if I divide that by six, which is what I've done there, that gives me the area of each and every single one, I'm only going to write it on one, 
I know that the area of that square and all the other squares are 49 centimeters squared. 49, 49, 49, 49. Very special number for me, 49. It's the number of Arsenal games that we went undefeated. It's still the record. Not much for us to hang on to as Arsenal fans, but that's one the one record we still have. Okay, and then I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, I've got a square and the area is 49. Now, if I just think of that and said, okay, what must the sides be? It's a square. Okay, so what's the inverse of squaring something? It's to square root something. So the square root of 49 is 7. And I've checked my answer back. 7 times 7 gives me 49. Ah, okay, so I know that all of the lengths all the way through this cube must be the same because that's one of the properties of a cube. Must all be 7. I've worked that out. And then I need to work out the volume. So if I work out the volume of a cube, what do I do? I'm going to do 7 times 7 times 7, which is the same as doing 7 centimetres cubed, which is what's on that line there. And that comes out to be 249 centimetres cubed. And why have I used cubed? Because we're working in the third dimension. It's a volume. So that question now, it requires some understanding. But if you unpick it, the actual steps are quite straightforward. I really do think for some students, though, just visualising the net might help them access that type of question. All right, folks, that was the last session. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that one. I really, I like that one. Um, we covered quite a lot in lesson objective terms today. Sketching nets of cuboids and prisms, finding the surface area of a prism, finding surface area using rectangles and triangles. So we did quite a bit there. Hopefully I'll see you again in the autumn term. Hopefully you'll find these useful moving forward. Have a great summer, folks. All the best. And I hope to, to meet some of you again in the next term. Bye-bye.